how it happened. <laughs> okay. And I, I really appreciate this. I, I told uh, the class, the guitar folks, I said, we'll play for the early service. Well, I planned out the early service and picked out songs we played before. We hadn't practiced none of this. We're just coming together and doing it this morning. And they do pretty well, you know, unrehearsed, I think. So I saw the light. song we've never done, but we have so much fun singing it here for the early service that I put it in there. And so folks, if you play a D chord, you'll get 90% of it, all right? And don't worry about the other 10, it'll be okay. No, you got, all you got to do is just play it. All right, children, go where I send you. One, two, ready, and.
Well, yeah, I hear myself. Good morning. Good to see you. So how many, I know it didn't stop at seven. How long does it go up? Twelve. I think Ronald said there's something like 70 slides on one side. 70 slides. I guess we should thank you (laughs) for just stopping at seven. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, you know, it it could happen. (laughs) We're on the fourth Sunday of Advent. We light the candle of love. And guess who's going to light the candle of love? All the candles today, except for the Christ candle. Our newlyweds. Isn't that appropriate that they would be lighting the candle of love? We look forward to that. Our scripture for this is Isaiah 7, 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shoal or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. And Isaiah said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. The land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. In Matthew, we hear these words. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, he was, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man, An unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for this child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All that took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke from his dream, he did as the angel commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And so today, indeed, we light all the candles but the Christ candle. If you'll read with me responsively the lighting of the Advent wreath. During Advent, we wait for the one promised in Scripture. We wait for the one who knows our deepest thoughts and fulfills our every need. And he will be called Everlasting Father. We wait for the one who will love us unconditionally as a parent loves a child. And he will be called Everlasting Father. We wait for the one whose grace and mercy will never end. And he will be called Everlasting Father. And so we light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. May we know all of those in our hearts and our lives as we wait for Christmas Eve when we will light the Christ candle. May we pray. Our Father, we thank you this day for this day. For the day that you have made and the day in which we are rejoicing, the day in which our hearts are full of your love, for your love overwhelms us. Your love is constant. We thank you for the opportunity of worship itself. When we can understand things in a different way, 
and we can be still for a moment and listen to you, and we can contemplate who we are and how we are and know who you are. We come this day to remember our world, a world that continues to hurt, a world that is in such sorrow and pain and suffering, but a world in which you are in. We remember the people in Australia as the fires burn relentlessly. We remember them and their suffering and their anguish. We remember so many other places in the world that are torn by hate and strife and greed. And we remember that you call us to be peacemakers. You call us to follow you. You follow us to be your hands and your feet and to share your heart and your love. For that is the work of Christmas. Oh, Lord, help us to do that work in all that we do. And so we pray this day in the name of the one who came to show us the way, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. pray. Our Father, we thank you this day in a time of giving that we can come and give, to give out of our hearts, out of our lives. We thank you that you have blessed us so richly and deeply, and now we give because you have given us everything. We give and we know these gifts will be used in your kingdom to share your love, to share your message. We thank you. In your loving name, we do pray. Amen. I'm going to play an instrumental now. One of the things we've been working on is learning to read which is a form of uh, reading music for string instruments. And so we're going to play uh, William Kirkpatrick's arrangement of The Way of the Manger. One, two, three, one, two.
It's one of my favorites, too. I always remember Emmylou Harris singing it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I like Emmylou. <laughs> Good morning again. Here we are. Are you ready for Christmas? Might as well be. <laughs> you know, it's December 22nd. Interestingly enough, this year, uh, tonight and last night were both the longest nights. Uh, they're they're equal. It's an odd thing that's happened. So, but after that, the light returns, and that's uh, that's why the early church uh, placed the celebration of Christmas at this time because of the wonderful analogies that we have in Scripture about the light has come into the world and to knowing the light and trusting in that light. And so, as we we think this day on this fourth Sunday of Advent, it's really about trust. How we trust in God. How we trust God with our lives. We often uh, gloss over the passage from Isaiah. uh, And we forget the historical context of that passage because we only remember as Matthew quotes it. But they're tied deeply together in a way that uh, we don't usually associate them. This really is about trust. Ahaz has got a problem, and the problem is a political problem. It's uh, a military problem. Uh, the, the, there's a great force in what is now Iraq, and it is threatening the kingdom, and the people in Syria and some of the other nations want uh, uh, Ahaz to join in a political alliance to somehow uh, defeat this imminent threat. And Ahaz has made up his mind what Ahaz wants to do. That sort of happens in life, doesn't it? Uh, we, we know what we want to do, and then we try to justify it in every way possible. Well, Isaiah comes to him with a word from the Lord, and, and uh, he says, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, and let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. Let it be through the boundaries of existence for this sign. But Ahaz says, I'm not going to ask. And, and, and he uses uh, sort of self-righteous language. I will not put the Lord to test. What he's really saying is, I don't care. <laughs> I've made up my mind, and I'm going to do it, and, and I don't want to hear what you have to say. And unfortunately, and In our lives, we are like that, too. We we make up our mind, and and we don't want to hear anything else. We shut everything else off. And Ahaz did this, and Isaiah said, then we'll hear it anyway. And that's the way God is. He will share his word with us. Anyway, Jesus was saying it a little bit, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But the word is still there. The message is still there. The purpose is still there. But we have to open our ears. We have to open our heart. We have to open our lives to that message. And Ahaz said, this is it. It's really simple. Is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary God also? So therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The woman is with child. She shall bear a son, and his name shall be Emmanuel. That name, as we see, will mean God is with us. And that's the message that Ahaz could not understand, that God was in the middle of all of this and that God was there. And if he had turned his heart and his life toward God and listen, then he would have indeed a different perspective, but unfortunately his mind was made up. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land in whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. And so it was. So Ahaz did not trust God. But in the passage in Matthew, we have a different person. 
a person who's often lost. I mean, if you looked at our nativity set, we could actually almost shuffle anybody and they could look like Joseph. Joseph's always in the back. He's always sort of nondescript. He's just sort of standing by. And sometimes that's a good thing. But Joseph gets lost in the nativity. But you see, a marvelous story of grace and trust and faith in Joseph. And Matthew tells it so very well. He tells us that God doesn't always work in the way that we understand or as we expect. And it's sometimes how God work upends our lives. Not only does it upend our lives, it, it also challenges us in our beliefs and how God indeed is working. Think about Joseph for a minute. Everything seems to be going really well with him. He's engaged. He's going to get married, and uh, he's excited. His newlyweds uh, always are excited the future and the world that is above them. And then he gets this news that unsettles him, that Mary is expecting. And it bothers him so much, and it says, Joseph being a righteous man, Joseph being a man that knows what is right and wrong, and, and God, Joseph being a man that wants to be right with God, He thinks about this, and he thinks about it, and, and he has several options before him to the customs of the time, and none of them are good. If he's going to be upright, righteous, and holy. And the more he thinks about it, the more he grasps the, the things that is happening, and the more troubling it becomes to him, and how he sees that his life is being disrupted, he decides out of the goodness of his heart, he is unwilling to put the one that he loves to public disgrace. And he planned to dismiss her quietly. Wow. I think those words have so many different meanings. Plan to dismiss her quietly. Now, there's an element, most graciously, there's an element of grace there. But there's also a troubling element for the way it speaks to our lives when things bother us and trouble us. We just want to dismiss them quietly, out of sight out of mind. I told you the story uh, several times, but after 21 years, you, you, you need a few reruns in, in illustration about the, uh, the, the two fairly to do persons who are dining in a really great restaurant and the uh, Say, look outside, and there's a child that's looking in. It's obviously hungry and disheveled and in need of stuff. And uh, finally, the lady gets up and closes the blind and says, well, I'll take care of that. We like to dismiss things that bother us quietly where they won't bother us. And if Joseph sends Mary away, she's going to be safe, at least far enough away. But she'll be out of his sight, she'll be out of his mind, and, and he will no longer have to worry about that. And in fact, he may not even have to worry what happens to her. But just when he had resolved to do this, just when he had made up his mind, you see, Ahaz made up his mind and wouldn't change his mind, but listen to the story of Joseph, just when he had made up his mind, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. He said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid 
Once again, we hear in the scripture, do not be afraid. We will hear it again Christmas Eve when we hear from Luke's account of the birth of Jesus. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Do not be afraid. One of the hardest things in life is overcoming our fears. One of the hardest things of our life is go beyond our fears and take the walk of faith and trust. And the angel who came to Joseph in that dream says, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived by her is from the Holy Spirit. This is something of God. This is something that you have thought was unholy, but it is holy. This is something that you thought was wrong, but this is the working of God in the life of her and in our world. But you need eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand. And Joseph did. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so it came to pass. So Joseph trusted God enough to go beyond his presuppositions, to enter into a new kind of relationship, a new challenge, a a new life. And he opened his home. He opened who he was to this child. And if that's not the message of Christmas, I don't know what is. That we open our hearts and our lives to this one who challenges our presuppositions, who challenges us and our ideals, and demands of us that we trust in him. And we trust him with what? We trust him with our lives. We trust him with our heart. We trust him with who we are. And because of who he is, it changes how we are. This is the candle of love. It is the candle of sacrifice. It is the candle, as everyone that is a parent knows, don't ever say what you're not going to do. Because God will challenge you. And your grace and his love will be sufficient. May we pray. Our Father, we thank you this day that we can come to you in these moments and that you challenge us. You challenge us to trust you, to trust you with who we are, to trust you with our lives. You challenge us to see things in a different way and to understand new and exciting relationships of of the very miracles that you can do, even with us. So as Christmas comes, may our hearts be open to who you are and who we might be. For we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Lord. Amen. And our hymn of invitation is the gift of love, and our invitation is to know that this Jesus is the Christ, and to accept him into our heart and our life, and to be a part of our fellowship and our membership here at McGill as we stand and sing.
You'll be seated. First of all, we want to remember Tracy Ball. Tracy is at Atrium, Maine now in Charlotte, and she is awaiting a liver transplant. And so we, uh, these are very uh, ten hard days uh, of waiting. And, uh, uh, but uh, remember that family as she waits in uh, Atrium, Maine. Keith Fitch is our deacon of the meet, uh, week. He'll be reading the Isaiah passage. And we have our global missioning offering is 5,000. We received 1,500. And we have a video. Au début, je travaillais avec mon père au jardin. Je fais les fleurs avec lui. Bon, je connais Michael Antison, qui est un client pour moi aussi. I very quickly realized he knew nothing about gardening at all. I really knew nothing. I said, I, I thought you were a gardener. He said, oh no, he said, I work for my father there and he doesn't pay me anything. That's why I'm asking for a job. Sans que Bruno en a dans les toits ou à la home et dans mes jardins. So he said, I've been looking for something I can feed my wife and my child. I said, well, bring her. Very quickly, you realize Bruno didn't make it to the fourth grade, but Bruno is very smart. Bruno can figure out anything. He has the capacity to really reflect on things and find out why things happen. Que beto doa o kudo maikela so gumag bejia. Dans le passé, je souffrais beaucoup. Je sais que je suis capable pour faire quelque chose, mais je n'ai pas le moyen pour développer ça. Tout a changé, beaucoup de choses qui ont changé dans ma vie. Now he's a full-time gardener. He makes a very successful business. Fafa also started saying, what can I do myself? And so she makes chicken wings and she sells them on the roadside. And normally within three hours, she's sold out. Some days she makes more money than Bruno makes. They've gone from being a family that nobody even finished elementary school to a family that's sending their kid to a private school. A day me donne des idées, mon courage. Donc on dit merci à Dieu. À CBF aussi. receive that up through Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas pokes will be assembled uh, this uh, to Christmas Eve at 10 o'clock. Be here, be right here, and be here at 10 o'clock because if you're here at 10, 15, 10, 20, it's probably already done because Ernie Hartzell is a taskmaster. He runs a tough shop, and he's got it organized, and we can do it fast, and it's so much fun. It's good to see all the generations that do it, and as I say every all the time, I know it's Christmas Eve when I come back at, at, and you smell, you walk into the foyer and you just smell that fruit. And it, that, to me, is Christmas. And what, what a wonderful tradition we have at McGill. So come in and out. Your offering envelopes are in your Sunday school class or in the hallway back over, right there, I think. You can bring your greeting cards or use greeting cards. They'll be recycled. We're still to collecting coats. And the January Joy Club will be... Uh, the Joy Club meeting in January will be Tuesday the 9th at 11 o'clock. Uh, Dale and Pam Thompson, uh, there are fairly new members here. They're from Vermont. They're going to come and talk about growing up in Vermont and uh, harvesting maple syrup and things that uh, are different to us. It's going to be a great program, and uh, come and uh, hear them. Uh, we have a blood drive here at McGill on the 20th. Uh, no hot dogs uh, 
this week. And let's see, barbecue and Brunswick stew is still available for your uh, holiday dining. Any other announcements? Rehearsals resume on January the 8th. Rehearsals resume January the 8th. Perfect. Great. So that'll be uh, my regular schedule resumed then. Okay. Anything else? All right, let's stand for our benediction, if you will. And now we go out into the world. As we go out into the world, we will trust God. We will trust God with our hearts. We will trust God with our lives. We will trust God with our purpose. And surely part of that purpose is to go out into this world and to show his love in every way that we can. For God is with us. Emmanuel, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen.